previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Before I depart, Mr. Arahodo, word in your ear, if you please. What's this about? You're going to lose today. What? I found the murder weapon in his back pocket. you f What? No, I'm just joshing you. All right, bye. And now back to leg it, people. Hello. Sneaky B. Back with some more. The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. We last left off, we returned to the courtroom once again, and this time in the present. <laughs> Even though technically we've been there twice this game, we uh, it's only now that we're actually doing it as Narahoto in the present time. And we basically need a little bit more information, but still nowhere near enough to understand what the fuck is going on in this case. It's seriously a weird one, man. However, there was something that was even more surprising that happened uh, last episode, and that was pointed out by Mazzato, who last episode said, uh, Judge, and here we have six members of the jury, all chosen at random. Actual new jury. Rinosuke, who are you people? <laughs> yes, that was the biggest twist of all. We had a, a jury of entirely new people, not a single reused asset. What the fuck, dude? I thought this game was on a budget. Damn, this is, pro this is it though, right? There's no way in hell we're ever getting a new a brand new jury ever again, right? They're like, you get this one and now you're gonna get the same jury mixed with the other people probably for the remainder of the game. We blew our load pretty early here in this game, but it seems that in fact, there are actually more than 10 people that live in this great city of ours. Ah, thank God. I really thought, I was really starting to think it was me losing my mind. Every one of these British people is starting to look the same and have the same weird gimmicks. But Mazzano, thank you so much for hilariously accurate comment. And it's for that reason you are not just our comment of the day, but our 500th comment of the day. That's right. We have done 500 of these things, dude. 500, that means 500 separate videos of comment of the day. Damn, dude, we've been doing this for a while now. This is a big, thick ass section we've been doing. We are now halfway to 1,000 of these things. And I, for one, just couldn't be more proud of you guys. Seriously, I've really enjoyed this, this section that we've done um, and just honestly, I feel like once we started doing it, people really even started going in with their comments and it's always just been such a joy going through and uh, reading what you guys have to say and uh, uh, highlighting some of my favorites. So uh, seriously, thank you guys. But yeah, it's like, I don't, <laughs> I'm like trying to think like, what what did I talk about here? Is there anything to even talk about? I'm just so like, not sure where this is going. I, I don't think this is going to be a case of the, oh, we, we're defending a bad guy after all, not like McGundle was or, or uh, McGilded or whatever. But, uh, like, I don't know who possibly the bad guy could be. And if it's not, like, some, at the fault of the machine, then, well, then who's the suspect? I feel like it's got to be someone we have not seen yet. Um, I just can't imagine it's somehow fucking, like, Madame Two Spells or some shit. Like, right now, those seem, those, like, two things seem so fucking separate from each other. I don't know. If they end up tying to each other in some way, I feel like it's going to be, uh... It's gonna be something weird. It's gonna be some weird shit. I think potentially it would have to be like the wax model was stolen and used in a way to like fake the crime in some way. Though I don't know exactly how that would be because I mean, they pretty sh I'm pretty sure these detectives are at least decent enough to realize a the difference between a wax sculpture and a dead fucking body. But the name of this case is called The Return of the Great Departed Soul. So that sort of leads me to believe like, is this guy going to come back from the dead or something? I don't know. And if that is the case, then I would think it has to do with like a wax model. But I mean, that's just like if you did that, you would have to make a specific kind of wax model. It's not like, well, I guess the serial killer looks kind of like me. I, I don't know. I've got so many fucking questions, man. So many questions. Um, all right. But we uh, actually ended up at, at having a uh, pretty uh, early to be continued last time. So, uh. Let's continue where we left off. We're actually going to bring in some more people, which I'm guessing is going to include Gina. Maybe somebody else. Um, October 23rd, not 10.44 a.m. The old Bailey defending Sandy Chamber. Way to fucking shoot my shit down, dumbass. <laughs> Mr. Narhodo. What on earth were you playing at just now? Or rather... What on earth were you playing at all along? My hypothesis! My amazing hypothesis! You've been picking holes in it from the start! You stupid asshole, I'm trying to prevent you from fucking eating shit! Ah, uh, sorry about that, except not really. But you promised me. You, you said you'd prove that dreaded explosion was an accident, not murder. You said you'd keep my precious invention from falling into anyone else's hands. 
But all you've done so far is try to undermine me. Oh my god, dude. Yes, I did make you a promise. You're right. Oh, I feel like I feel like uh, Naruto is like like this close from like losing it by hearing him say that. Really, you're gonna say that to me? I'm undermining you. I said that I believe in you and fight for your freedom to the very end. But I also told you I was no scientist. I don't understand your hypothesis, and neither does anybody else. The fact is, there's an undeniable flaw in your logic, isn't there? Ah, but if I just run through some equations by doing this crazy way of writing I do, and then consuming the paper, the knowledge goes into my brain, that doesn't work or make any sense. Yes, you see, it's because my work isn't complete. Perhaps it is. Nevertheless, a man died as a consequence, didn't he? Oh. Oh, no! <laughs> That's right, he did die, didn't he? You're right. You're so right. It's all my fault. And I have no right to blame you for my failures. Damn straight. I'm a disaster. Not just as a scientist, but as a human fucking being! Well, that might be a little over the top. And while we're on the subject, so are you! <laughs> Never mind, you do suck. Wh what about Barack? He's being awful! Well, he's the prosecutor! What do you think he was gonna be your best friend? Claiming his old university friend to be a murderer, you mean? He's a disaster, not just as a prosecutor, but as a human being! Uh oh, but no! Wait, he's a reaper, isn't he? Perhaps he's not classified as a homo sapiens anymore. Glad that's cleared up. Can I double check something with you? Ah, uh, yes. What? The machine and the demonstration you prepared, they were based entirely on your hypothesis, I presume. There was no trickery involved. Like by your engineer, who you tasked to do that, to make this thing. I drew the plans for the machine with my very own hands. Every line was painstakingly drawn with a firm belief that science is the only future. So yes, it's true that my hypothesis hasn't reached maturity yet. But please, Mr. Arhodo, you must believe in it. All right, Professor Dumbass. I understand. Council defendant! Get you and your weird, crazy antics in here. The prosecution's witness already take the stand. Ghost might be in session again. Make your way to the courtroom, please! All right, British Commander. Yeah, you realize it's me, British Commander, the greatest of all characters. It all hinges on that demonstration. If the professor's hypothesis is as sound as he claims, it leaves him as the only person who could possibly have killed the victim. But on the other hand, Mr. Holmes was adamant. A practical impl implementation such as was attempted by the professor at the Great Exhibition is quite impossible. And we all know he's probably way smarter than this guy, even though he forgets everything. So really, what should I be trying to prove here? October 23rd, 11 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. And we're back. I love that. I love the moment I put that gavel down. Just everyone just immediately stops. Immediately. Now, if you could only do that all the time, you stupid audience members. Fuck you, dude. I'm still bleeding for that bottle of the face earlier. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby reconvene the proceedings of this court. Counsels for the defense and prosecution, are you ready for the new witnesses to testify? The prosecution is ready, my lord. As the defense, my lord. So, Lord Van Zeeks, I believe these next witnesses saw the demonstration on the day in question with their own eyes. Indeed, they did. And as luck would have it, one of them is a police detective. Yep. So the testimony we are about to hear can be considered highly reliable. Even though it's technically Gina, and she was on trial a while back. She's actually been in this courtroom a couple of times now for less savory reasons but i ignore that perfect a detective of all people the prosecution's stance remains unchanged though it ended in tragedy the demonstration on the day in question was scientifically sound and consequently the sole person with the opportunity to have committed this act of murder is the only other individual to have been present on the stage at the time the accused Thank you, counsel. The prosecution's position is clear. So bring forth your witness now. Bailiff, show the witnesses in. Alrighty, I'm getting a lot of screen time today. The witnesses whose proximity to the incident on the day in question will clarify the truth unequivocally. 
All right. Oh. Well, you guys are new. Hi, Gina. Oh, those like the blimp guys or something? They're holding balloons. They're like they're part of the circus. Witnesses state your name and occupations for the court to hear. Um, oh boy. Lune, huh? Oh my gosh, realize his fucking hat is literally a hot air balloon. <laughs> oh my God, that does not look safe. How often does your hair catch fire, sir? My name is Balthazar Lune. I am the impresario of the, all the hot air balloons in the vicinity of the experimental stage. Cut goats. Oh, Wilhelm Gosreich. My name is Wilhelm Gosreich Sigeswan Ostein. I have come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. It's a lad, right? This is what I took all those German classes for, right? I'm very rich. Very rich. <laughs> Actually, where should I should really go think? Go. Very rich. Inspector G. Lestrade, Scotland Yard. I'm a great detective. Sh even Sherlock Holmes appraise. I was on security duty at the ex exhibition. I go up on one of those balloons. It was amazing. Gina, again. God damn it. <laughs> I feel like I've seen you a lot lately. But she did mention that she's seen the disaster from up in a balloon, actually, didn't she? She clearly loved every minute of it. There were three balloons flying near the public experimentation stage when the incident occurred. Two of these witnesses were in one such balloon at the time and saw events unfold from the skies above. You make it sound like they were in the clouds. It was only an altitude of circa 60 feet, very low. Well, you can't see nothing if you fly too high, can you? 60 feet, about 80 meters then. Thank you for your introductions. Now you will give your formal testimony for the court. Kindly describe exactly what you witnessed, especially those of you who had a vantage point above the stage. Okie dokie. I love all the character designs in this man. I just, I, oh, I realized too, he's actually got a giant bandage on his head. That's probably gonna play into something. Uh, the view from 60 feet up. It was an incident terrible. I'm only grateful that my balloons were not damaged. There's this huge bang from the stage. And then the next second, another bang in the sky beside us. And from amidst the smoke, a cage appeared out of nowhere. The cage fell from the sky like a stone and crashed into the crystal tower. I didn't get a good look inside the cage, but no one went near it after it crashed into the tower. Okay. A most extraordinary collective account, I must say. Could I just clarify something? There's a detail in the witness's testimony that I've not heard any mention of until now. Specifically, that there were two explosions. More precisely, two explosions in two separate places, yes. When the demonstration began, the balloon carrying the two witnesses was around here. There were other balloons in the air, the air nearby at the time, carrying other passengers as well, to be clear. Boom! Then, as power was supplied to the machine for the demonstration, the first explosion occurred. The so-called birdcage that contained the victim disappeared from the stage, and a moment later... The second explosion occurred directly adjacent to the balloon carrying the witnesses. The birdcage appeared at the site of the explosion, subsequently to pump, plummet down into the crystal tower. Hmm. I was very surprised suddenly a cage appeared before my eyes with, with a person inside. The blast was so hard, but I didn't want to miss a thing, so I kept my eyes wide. <laughs> I like another balloon. Oh, I see. He loses the balloon, and then he pays for another one. That's cute. I still have lots of money. <laughs> Precisely who is this curious infant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who let this baby in here? This German baby. I'm told he's a young noble of the Bohemian royalty. Apparently, he disguised himself in order to steal unnoticed into the Great Exhibition. Yeah, I am here in London on a sightseeing trip with my elementary school. Who will have the benefit of a child's point of view in the testimony? <laughs> Do you really need that? <laughs> is that really a benefit? Then I remove my mask. Is this is what I look like? Ah, <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, my God. It's 
don't know who it is. A delightful face, I'm sure. Yeah, everybody says so. <laughs> Great disguise then, you dipshit. The point is, the testimony of these witnesses further substantiates the facts for the court. Namely, that despite ending in an explosion, instantaneous kinesis was successfully demonstrated. And furthermore, that until the arrival of the police, no one approached the crystal tower where the victim fell. Mm. Therefore, only the accused who was with Mr. Aston on stage could possibly have committed the murder. Yes, thank you, counsel. The prosecution's views on the matter are quite clear. So, the defense is cross-examination now, please. Y yes, my lord. Okay. Was there anything right offhand that, like... So it was an instant terrible. I'm only grateful that my balloons were not damaged. There's this huge bang from the stage. In the next second, another bang in the sky beside us. And from amid the smoke, a cage appeared out of nowhere. The cage, it fell from the sky like a stone and crashed to the crystal tower. I didn't get a good look inside the cage, but no one went near it after it crashed into the tower. I'm going to press on that one. Was it you who gave the order to keep people away? Eh? Use your head, old dude! How could it have been me? I was up in a blue one, I. Right. So because I wasn't available, it was the boss who had to leg it over there. He was getting shoved and kicked all over the by the panic inspectors as he tried to seal off the scene. It was a real sight to behold, I can tell you. Amazing! Poor Inspector Gregson. So anyway, I couldn't see the case that well because of all the smoke. And I didn't really want to see, to be honest. I was scared out of my wits. Keep it together, Inspector. Okay, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I don't, don't want to hear it. I just, I, I don't want to hear it. I just, I just want to press that. All right, I guess we'll start from the, the top then. Uh, it was an incident uh, terrible. Oh, wait, it's, I didn't even realize he's saying an incidente terrible. So does that make him Spanish? French? I'm not actually sure. He looks more like a French gent, potentially. Uh, Well, either way. Hold it, hold it, Mata. There were three balloons flying above the experimentation stage at the time, I understand. Oh, no, he is. He, he is. He, okay, he, he's actually Spanish. So, okay, I can work with that. See, si, see, si, all, three, all three of them, my bellissime bambini. And they are very popular, senor. Some people would pay 10 pounds for one ride. 10 pounds? It's more than my annual stipend. 20 pounds a month. That is my pocket money. Where else have all the luck? Shut up, you little asshole. I got there for free, I did. Play the old I want for their majesty's police guard, you know? Detectives have all the luck. <laughs> if they're so popular, why would you be operating such a small number of balloons, though? Because I have too many in the skies that could crash in e into each other. The operators for the balloons were decided by lots, with each operator manning a particular area. See, and the zone above the public experimentation stage is the most profitable. The other presarios, they hate me. Thank you, witness. I think the court is a clear picture of the arrangements for balloon rides at the exhibition. Perhaps we could hear more about what you actually witnessed of the incident. Right, I can fill you in there, my lord. Okay, there's this huge bang from the stage. The next second, another bang in the sky beside us. So you actually saw the accident happen from up in the air. Yup, ain't it amazing what a detective gets to do, eh? I'm telling you, Order, being a lawyer's a mug's game. You should join the force and we can go flying together. You know me so well. <laughs> yes, well, anyway, could you tell us exactly what you saw, do you think? Everything. We saw everything because we were up above it all. That dodgy cove climbing into that cage. And that dodgy professor pulled all them levers. And that's when it happened. That's when there was a massive bang and the cage disappeared. Just like that. Mm, you are describing the moment the subject's body was decomposed by the electricity, I believe. I didn't know what to make of it. Well, then there was another bang right over here. I looked around and there was a huge great fireball right next to us in the sky. And there was nothing there before. Oh, or was there? Excuse me. Excuse me, German baby. Um, yeah, Master Goats, does your memory of the day differ? Hmm. My teacher at elementary school says that when you meet someone for the first time, you should always use the full name. 
Uh, yes. Um, what was it again? Wer hat den Gastreich Sigismund Ostad? It's just the four names then? The point is, do you have something to say or not? God damn it, are you gonna say something? You're going to time out. Something to add in response to Detective Gina Lestrade's last remark, perhaps. Oh, get around, Otto! It's Inspector Lestrade! Why does everyone have a problem with how I dress them at the moment? Jesus! That is not what I saw. Oh? Yeah, that was the second explosion. It was right beside our balloon. That is true. But I'm shut. Which is what I said, ain't it? One minute there was nothing there, and next there was a massive explosion. My teacher at elementary school says that when someone else is speaking, if you are rude enough to interrupt, you will have the most awful life imaginable. Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus. Somebody lose this lost German baby. Are all Bohemians brought up to be so full of joy? Thank God he has an infinite supply of those balloons. I saw that balloon just spawn in too in his hand. <laughs> Anybody else see that? He had three, then suddenly four again. Just before the second explosion happened next to our balloon, I clearly witnessed a green balloon flying in the sky. A green balloon? Eh? Yo, what? I never saw nothing like that. And then I did. I saw it. You can't say I did it. I'm in a complete second. So I'm going to cry and scream. Oh, my God. Was it Gina's hat flying off or something? <laughs> my testimony is in truth. I am a human prince. You cannot say it's a lie. Such a sound alone. No, no. Playing the plain rules, it got, are you? Typical. Says the orphan who likes to remind people she works for her majesty's police. In that case, young man, I must ask you to amend your formal testimony in the interest of cordial national relations between Great Britain and Bohemia. <laughs> okay. It was not the skies that exploded. It was the green balloons that was next to us at the time. Uh, oh. Uh, Objection. That's not, what am I thinking? Well, that, what, it's not shooting anything down. I'm such a dumbass. Uh, boom. That doesn't make any sense. Look at this. Probably this, though. That's what this is going to be. Wait, do I need to look at it again? Uh, nope. Not where I can tell. So that's what this is likely going to be. Um, I guess I'll just press them again. A green balloon, you say? Are you sure about that? Of course I am sure. I am probably a prince. All these questions are making me boring. I think you mean bored. Ah! English is very annoying. The language of my cartoon is far superior. The cause it is it is very wrong to lie. Lie? Flying balloons never explode. For the same reason the planets never explode. It is logical. Please tell me that doesn't mean logical. If you insult me, you insult all of Bohemia. My day. I will have an army come shoot all of your stupid balloons out of the sky. All of them. Hello, one balloon, please. Oh, here you go. Thank you. Who you are, your highness. If only all international incidents were seriously resolved. Now that peaceful relations have been restored here in the courtroom, perhaps we could return to the testimony. Did you also see the moment that the cage materialized, Mr. Lunay? No, no, I did not see the expl explosione. I, I, explosione? I, I think he's Spanish. He's saying CC and... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I could be. I don't know. Anyway, is it actually explosion? Is that you say explosion in Spanish? Did not see the explosion myself. However, can I not work with anything that I got here? So like, that's what this likely is. I Man, I just gotta keep pressing the other stuff and glean new information. The cage fell from the sky like a stone and crashed into the crystal tower. Did you see that actually happen? Yeah. No. In reality, I did not. I saw it after it hit the tower. There was a grand, grand confusion over this, around this stage. I ran to see what had happened. I was terrorized by the idea that one of my balloons had crashed. I suppose there are, are, they are his livelihood. But when I looked to the sky, all my precious balloons were still there. I saw though, I saw slamming in the tower after all. I am a detective now. Then tell us what you saw, Inspector Lestrade. That's what I like to hear. 
I didn't get a good look inside the cage, but no one. Okay, well, now we've hit the end. So, what am I missing here? Objection. Oh. Oh, that's. This was actually kind of a clever one. This was actually kind of a clever one. This is a little different. This is actually not. They made this one a little less predictable than it generally is in these Ace Attorney games. I, I was looking at his statement, the boy's statement. I was like, I do not see anything to fucking, like, contradict what he said. Because usually what always is up happening, right? And this is your statement. And then that's the statement that you're going to shoot down, right? It, like, happens probably, like, 95% of the time, right? That that's the case. In this instance, though, you took that information. You figured out, oh, there was a green balloon that exploded. Then you went back to the start, to the... The guy's previous statement that none of my balloons were harmed and presented this to show to show no actually in fact your balloon did explode that's actually really cool i that's again you really don't see that very often that's why i was like i was actually baffled for a second I'm like what the fuck am i missing here and i was like wait can i just yeah once i have that now i can present i'm not even using technically anything new i doubt i could have presented that this uh this piece unless i got that bit of testimony but now that I have that clarification, I can uh, I can present it. I don't know. It was just, that, that was cool. Mr. Luna, in your testimony, you said that all three of the balloons you had operate at the time were undamaged. His name is Lo Loon. I get it. Ha ha ha. ha. Wait, what was, what was his full name again? This pun here? Balthazar Lune. Hi, uh, Balloon. Balloon. Uh, and Bohemian Boy. Vaskus Kuskanana. I'm having a pun in his... Uh, German name as well. See, that is correct. If they'd been caught in the explosions, it would have been terrible. Terrible. I wonder if you might know what this is. Ah, yeah, I think it may be. See, part of a balloon. A burnt piece of the fabric of the envelope. Sorry? The envelope? Uh, pardon. It is the large round part of the balloon which becomes filled with hot air. It is made from a very thick fabric lined with rubber. You do not want to rip it when you are in the sky. Just as I thought. This piece of cloth was found near the experimentation stage. In other words, as Master Gotts would testified, a green balloon did indeed explode that day. <coughs> if all the balloons in the sky above the experimentation stage belong to you, Mr. Lune, then your statement that they were all undamaged clearly contradicts the evidence. No! <laughs> Pop! But the balloon explode that day. Why did the men say so? <laughs> this guy's just tossing cards out. Oh no, I've just spent a total 10 pounds on the experiments. How awful. Seems to me like this thing's across 50% of the time Objection. anyway. Objection. Shut up, everybody. The instantaneous kinesis did, uh, did occur. But after the explosion on the stage, the point of materialization shifted to a location occupied by a balloon. Causing the balloon to explode? Yes, eminently possible. plausible. An unfortunate traffic accident, as it were but it changes nothing about the pertinent facts. Hold it. Yeah, this uh, I cannot accept. Why not, Mr. Lune? You are suggesting that I am a liar. The person's, di the person's died in a balloon incident. There's no need to get fired up, Mr. Lune. The victim was the sole fatality that day. Oh. That's right, and I prove it. Balthazar Lune is not a liar. There is no such balloon in the sky. It is not impossible. You're saying it's not impossible? Why? This court has more important matters to discuss than the number of balloons that were operating that day. Die! Objection! Objection! But we can't ignore the fact that nobody appears to have known anything about this other balloon until now. My lord! The defense calls for further testimony for Mr. Lune! I'm thinking his name is pronounced Lune, not Loon, but I don't know. That concurs clearly more to the truth here than meets the eye. It's imperative that we clear up the issue of this phantom balloon, I feel. Witness, you will give supplementary testimony about the balloons you were operating at that ex exhibition. Ah, grazie, my lord. But see, grazie, wait. Grazie is, is Italian, isn't it? Right? I, I think, is Italian... Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm sorry. I, I really don't know dick about actually the Italian language. So, hold on. Uh, is yes in Italian at also C? If so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm such a dumbass Americano. It is. Fuck. It's, he's Italian. He's not Spanish. Fuck. 
Well, that's great. I can't wait to see all of the comments. This next episode is going to be like, Nico, this... Oh, shit. God damn it. Sorry, I'm trying my best. Okay, I'm trying... I'm like, I... I had, a, I had a feeling in my 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 chest that was like, I'm like, I think there might be other languages that also use C as yes, but I'm, like I said, I'm a dumb Americano. Anyway, that makes makes a bit more sense. So he's Italian. He's not fucking Spanish. I, I, I didn't think, some of the things that weren't lining up with Spanish as I thought it, but I was like, maybe I'm just a fucking idiot. But apparently that's still true. That holds. Yeah, gracias, my lord. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Mr. Lunay's balloons. As I said, Balthazar Lunay is no liar. Every balloon I had in this sky landed safely. All three of my balloons were carrying passengers. They fell to the ground in an explo explosion. What a catastrophe. But you can't get away from the fact that a burnt up bit of the cloth was found at the scene, can ya? The corpus of the yard reckon it was probably some debris thrown from the explosion on the stage. Yeah, this stupid Orak also is mistaken. My balloons have red and blue zigzag strikes anyway. Really? Okay. Hmm. So your assertion is that the balloon this child saw was not one belonging to you. See, si, exactamente. Even if he saw a balloon in the first place, I, I do not like the sound of it. It is a very bad for business. I have a good mind to sue the land of Bohemia. If you attack us, we will fight back. We will war all out for- Oh, Jesus Christ. Another balloon, please. Oh, yes, there you go. We're friends again. What happened to All Out War? <laughs> the moment he runs out of balloons, we're all gonna get fucking blown to bits. Mr. Lunay certainly doesn't appear to be lying, but that doesn't change the fact that the testimony and the evidence are contradictory here. The defense is unable to find fault with the witness's statements. The court must consider them the truth. Think long and hard on that, my learned friend. The situation has clearly changed now. I have to get to the bottom of what happened here, no matter what it takes. Counsel, you may now cross-examine the witness. Okay. Uh, so... Red and blue stripes, huh? Well, I guess I have anything here that matches that. So let's just go ahead and keep pressing. Uh, as I said, Balthazar Luna is no liar. Every balloon has the sky landed hey. safely. Mata! You couldn't just have forgotten one, maybe. Signor, I might not notice if I was given 100 lentils and one was missing, but we are talking about three enormous balloons. Do you believe I could make a mistake about something so grande and expensive? I took the liberty of having Inspector Gregson check this gentleman's warehouse. I have the report here. It clearly says a total of three balloons. Do appear no mistake has, has been made then? Surely Mr. Straw could have been sent for such a menial task. What? Me? I'll tell you what I told the boss. Asian kids like me can only count up to two. Obviously that ain't true. But the boss bought it and said I'd have to go on my, go himself in that case. Ah. <sighs> All three of my balloons were carrying passengers. They fell to the ground in an explosion of what a catastrophe. Good. It would be quite a catastrophe if they fell to the ground for any reason, I think. On that note, Mr. Lunay, tell me, what is it that keeps these balloons in the sky? Oh, you an idiot! Sorry? Just like asking, what does a candle burn bright? It burns bright because it burns bright. And a balloon flies because it flies. What else? <sighs> I must be Italian for, I don't know. Hey, look, there it is, Nico. Even if you didn't figure it out to this point, the game was going to tell you, you stupid asshole. There are two types of flying balloons, hot air balloons and gas balloons. Hot air balloons work on the principle of hot air being less dense than cold air, whereas gold gas balloons drive their lift by using a gas as lighter than air. See, and my balloons are filled with the magic gas, I believe. Hydrogen, lighter than air, but highly explosive. Good lord! I do not permit smoking or cigarettes in any of my balloons. The magic gas does not fly fire. Even a small spark of static electricity could cause the entire balloon to explode. So, oh, what is the matter with you, Senor? What that comes out of your mouth is explosion, explosion! I tell you, my balloons are perfectly safe. They have to be, but I cannot eat. None of my balloons exploded that day. I am completely sure. But if you still say that is what happened, you must show me the proof. 
All right. So Mr. Looney had three balloons in the air that day. If none of them were damaged, then what was the one that exploded? Uh, but you can't get away from the fact that a burnt up bit of the cloth was found at the scene. Hold, Hold it! I was surprised to find the piece of fabric still at the scene, actually. Didn't you search the area surrounding the stage for clues? Nah, I don't want to pick stuff up off the ground, me. Always works out way better. Diving into people's pockets instead. So much for the new career path. Mind you, the boss was on his hands and knees picking up all kinds of rubbish from the floor. Thing is, though, the gauge went crashing into the Crystal Tower, didn't it? So that's when most of the investigation was going on. Even so, I would have thought someone from Scotland Yard would have gathered it up as evidence. Cool! Listen to you! You stumbled across a bit of balloon and suddenly you're the best investigator in the world! Pardon? Well, you ain't got a badge, have you? Like this one! I can arrest you with it if I wanted to. Well, I got an armband. I wouldn't put it past her. Come to think of it. That was talking to some scorching on the ground at the meeting we had about the investigation. The coppers of the yard reckoned it was probably some debris thrown from the explosion onto the stage. There was considerable damage to the stage in the surrounding area, wasn't there? Yeah, some of the goes of what were watching the experiment were caught in the blast and engine. Good job the old contraption didn't kill over, eh? I hadn't even considered that. It seems there was a great panic after the incident occurred. Nevertheless, the police shouldn't have missed a torn piece of the envelope from a balloon. Inspector Gregson can expect repercussions. <laughs> like me swapping all his fishy chips, eh? <laughs> Gregson's over in the back of the car. Man's sole pleasure. None of this matters. Describe a balloon enveloped means nothing. In the end, the stu the stupido Ragazzo is mistaken. My balloons have the red and blue zigzag stripes Holy anyway. You mean the color is wrong? See, si, Senor, I did not have any green balloons in my warehouse. And yet, a piece of green cloth was found at the scene. It's unmistakably from a balloon. Well, eh, well, I do not know how that can be. For the sake of argument, let's say that a green balloon did explode above the stage. You couldn't therefore conclude that it happened on the day in question. Why not? There have been recreational balloon flights over Hyde Park operating from before the Great Exhibition. One could have exploded on some earlier date. Unfortunate, as I'm sure you'd agree. You believe it may have been from some earlier balloon accident that predates the exhibition? See, si, exactamente. As the senor says, it is from one of my not from one of my balloons. Clearly, this little Ricardo from Bohemia is mistaken about what he saw. Oh, he's getting all inky again. Excuse me. Excuse me! Is something wrong, Master Gotts? It's a matter of it having got strikes and signals about the unstyle. It's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, so this very long. I know what I saw. There was a green balloon there. I swear. I swear all over Bohemia. You can speak as much bad language as you like, but it changes nothing. If you do not have evidence, Sir Caso, then I must tell you your parents to tell your parents to punish you, eh? Oh my god. Perhaps we'll let the judge decide when it comes to punishments. Evidence? What is this evidence? Do you have a simple example, young man? A photograph, for instance. Some tangible proof of what you claim. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? I was a photograph here. Good, good gracious. What? I had not been up in balloon for a little while, so I was very excited. I took lots and lots of photographs. Of the Crystal Tower, of the Bohemian Experiment, of the streets of London, of the high air cellar, and the balloon. In the instantaneous ex kinesis experiment. Did you take a picture of that? Yeah, I have a picture. Really? You did take one? But all I wanted was to fly the balloon. I was not interested in bonding experiments. Never mind that. Can you show us that photograph? Of course. Then you will see. You will see that I was not lying. Is that I did really did get see a green balloon. Well, I mean, it's not going to be in color, but. Wow, nice, <laughs> nice cinematography there. Fair. I see you've all too, too, too shocked to speak. Yes, I think shocked is indeed the word, young man. 
Yeah, perhaps you cannot see that it's for the green balloon for the photograph, but... But... But that is not my fault! That is not my fault! This is a stupid person that makes the camera! <laughs> oh my god, the dots over the A's. That is one very bohemian sounding crying. <laughs> very well, the gold from acceptance photograph is evidence. Photograph taken by the goths while he was... Uh, well, he was riding in a balloon. It shows another balloon that he claims was green exploded moments after he took a sh the shot. It's not my fault. The fault is the first who made the camera. Well, never mind. I'm sure you have plenty of wonderful sepia memories to take take home with you. In any case, when exactly did you take that photograph? Well, it was on the desk. The thing exploded. You don't say. Let me have a look at this again. Uh, okay, so we see like a uh, something blasting off there, right? Like that white line right here, seemingly going right for this balloon. I'm gonna bet that's like the crossbow, essentially, like an arrow being shot. Anything to be seen around here? Anything else? Not offhand, no. When I put this shot of Elise, it was the very loud blank, and the hot wind rushed over my face. That means this photograph was taken a split second before the explosion occurred. Well, if you ask me, this black and white photograph changes nothing. I could not give the flying fig. <laughs> Lovely language you picked up. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Okay, so present the evidence here. Objection. Yeah, there we go. The picture. Unfortunately, the photograph Mr. Goss took can't tell us the color of the balloon. But it can tell something else. Something crucially important. What? It shows that the picture balloon wasn't carrying any passengers. Ah, my goodness, you're right. But surely all the balloons would have been carrying passengers. There would be no sense in it otherwise. Yes, see, they have a pleasure for seeing the view. The eye balloons only fly with passengers. Which tells us the picture balloon isn't one of them. So when the incident occurred that day... There was a fourth balloon in the sky, but the experimentation stage. The mysterious green balloon. That I know nothing. Diante, I can only tell you one thing. If this balloon was not carrying passengers, then it was not one of mine. I guess balloon like just stays as he gets angry. There are legal tradesmen everywhere you care to look. Clearly one such entrepreneur decided to capitalize on the opportunity presented by the great exhibition. He may have operated balloon flights on Mr. Lune's patch without him realizing. See, si, see, si. the competizione trying to steal my profits. It did not notice because of the experimental that went wrong in this stage. This fourth balloon exploded the very same moment Mr. Asma was beamed from the stage below. Right, so them scraps that fell to the ground after and left him scorch marks, they didn't come from the stage at all. It was a bit of the balloon raining down. Because no one was in it, it didn't get no one attention. Mysterious fourth balloon carrying no passengers, silently floating above the experimentation stage. Objection. Objection! This photograph shows us nothing more! A stray balloon carrying no one operated by something rogue traitor. Clearly it has nothing to do with the case. Hmm. Its relevance does elude me, I must say. The court has seen sufficient evidence and heard ample testimony already. The prosecution calls for this trial to be concluded! Ding. Dang. Really? Have you really gotten to the truth yet? No. I can't let this opportunity slip away. The jurors' minds are made up and not in our favor. What else can this photograph tell us? Is there nothing more we can learn from it? There's more! Objection! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, wait. Please don't give your decisions yet. The photograph of Master Gotts may well be hiding one more vital clue. <clears throat> What's that? A vital clue? Objection! We're well past the point of mere possibilities. It's time for definitives now, so tell the court. What exactly does this alleged clue in the photograph prove? Uh, the balloon's owner, the balloon's color, the cause of the explosion. We can reasonably assume the picture of the balloon was destroyed in the searing heat of the explosion. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's just not my fault. Evidently. Because the birdcage from the Kinesis machine materialized in the sky where it had been flying. 
and the balloon, being filled with flammable hydrogen, instantly and explosively ignited. Protection. Nay, no, that's not what happened. What? It will appear that this photograph requires closer examination. Counsel for the defense, you will highlight the location of this alleged clue in the photograph of the court. Yeah, of course, my lord. If you look closely, it's plain enough to see. And what's shown is linked to another piece of evidence we have. In a way, that leads to an unbelievable conclusion. Yeah. The clue that heavily suggests that the real reason the, the blue exploded is... You! Take that! Take that! The timing of this photograph can only be described as miraculous. If you look, you'll notice there's a bright white line that appears to point directly at the balloon. Most likely a ray of light caught incidentally on the film. I'm afraid I can see nothing of the sort. If you look with a magnifying glass, my lord, it becomes clear what the nature of this bright line really is. Goodness, what is that? Undeniably some flash of light, yes. Oh, golly, do, do you think it might be lightning? But it couldn't have been a finer day. I believe I may be looking at fire. Yeah, about to fire and stray for the balloon. Uh, like an arrow. Indeed, even to my aging eyes, it would appear to be a flame of some sort. My word, are you suggesting this flame struck the hydrogen gas that filled the balloon? Objection! Objection! That's absurd. Balloon would have been 60 feet above the ground at the time. No flame could possibly have reached such a height. Objection! Actually, it's my opinion that a particular piece of evidence found at the scene reveals how that ex is exactly what did happen. What evidence? Such evidence exists, counsel. Then for goodness sake, present it, man. <laughs> present it, man! What evidence explains the mysterious trick of flame that appears to be head directly to the balloon? Boom! This was found hidden at the foot of a small ornamental tree near the scene. Good lord, is that a crossbow? An arrow dipped in oil and set alight could have been shot from this weapon. Send a, sending a flaming arrow straight into the hydrogen-filled balloon. Are you suggesting that crossbow is used to deliberately? Blimey, you're right! That strike of light in the photo looks just like an arrow, don't it? Then the explosion is a balloon, it, it was. Very likely the result of a flaming arrow from this crossbow, igniting the hydrogen gas inside it. No! Oh, my heart! Order! Order! Council, this is an extraordinary supposition. If the aim was to cause the balloon to explode, the shooter could have used a gunner, gun, of course. However, there's an obvious reason why that would have been out of the question. The noise of the discharge, of course. That's right. By using a crossbow, the projectile could be fired at the balloon silently. Well, yeah. I saw it showed a gun off the exhibi exhibition grounds it would have caused a real panic. But it was... The big explosion, the explosion, there was a big panic anyway, no? I don't like this. I should be pleased to have found a plausible new explanation for all this, but something feels wrong. Objection! Objection! Do you understand the implications of what you're saying, my Nipponese friend? If the flaming arrow did indeed hit the balloon, then obviously would have exploded. And if the birdcage appeared from the cloud of smoke that, ens that ensued. What? Wait a minute! What are you really saying here? I don't get it. What? Was the birdcage beamed up into the sky after all? Oh, what? My goodness me. Mm -hmm. Ah, now I understand. That's what that sicky feeling is about. I think there's a good chance that the birdcage was actually concealed inside the balloon all along. Oh, <laughs> did I just hear that, that correctly, Council? There's no going back now. The horse is bolted. Mmm. So he was already in there. I wonder that if the crossbow could have killed him, like the shot in there and hit him in the chest. But that means that the person down below, what, was a fake person? Let's assume, as I said, the birdcage was hidden inside the green balloon from the start. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see now potentially these, this uh, magician juror like playing a part in just like understanding this because he's like, you know, the art of illusion. Unless he just being the bad guy. On the stage when the experiment was started, the birdcage in the instantaneous kinesis machine disappeared in a cloud of smoke. 
At that moment, the flaming arrows fire from the ground, causing the green balloon to explode and drawing the attention of the spectators to the sky above their heads. Boom! Ow. From amid the smoke, the hidden bird case had appeared to fall down and crash into the crystal tower. I think it'll all agree it's entirely plausible. That, that's what I've just described as the real truth behind the miraculous experiment carried out that day. This, I, good grief. Good grief. Objection. Objection. I'm saying that a lot this episode. This is ludicrous. What you described is no science experiment. It's, it's child's play. A contemptible display of stage magic. Both Mr. Mr. Holmes and Iris said the experiment was a scientific impossibility. In which case, this is the only way to explain what happened that day. In any case, the victim's body was found inside the birdcase in the Crystal Tower. If these instantaneous kinesis didn't take place, how do you explain that? Ah! Um... If I may put in a word, it's a man of magic myself. Hey, I fucking knew it! Such an apparent discrepancy can easily be explained by simple de deception. D juror number three? Wow, thank God you happen to just be here today. All that would be needed is a doppelganger, someone who looked very similar to the victim, Mr. Asman, and having this other man appear on stage to front the show as a body double. Behold, birds in my pants. Ah, yes, of course. So in fact, ah, Mr. Asman must have been inside the birdcase that was concealed inside the balloon right from the start. Objection. Which probably meant he was in there breathing in a whole bunch of fucking hydrogen, right? <laughs> that balloon would have been filled with hydrogen. Anything hidden inside would have been scattered at four winds when it exploded. No one would ever have embarked on such a risky venture. Not necessarily. The explosive force of that balloon gas would very much depend upon the mixture ratio. Juror number four. Thank God you're, you were also here today. Fine balloons are very rarely filled with pure hydrogen, but a mixture of other gases is helium as well. Helium on its own doesn't explode, but by controlling the gas mixer ratio, the explosive force can be altered. The mixer ratio? Obviously, the victim's body would have suffered some burns. That would be unavoidable. But not to such an extent as to render this whole obscene charade impossible. He <laughs> thinks like the hell is going on. So everything that happened can be explained logically and scientifically. <clears throat> Logically and scientifically. The explosion that engulfed the stage at the start of the experiment was no accident. It was all part of an elaborate deception to make it appear that the instantaneous kinesis had occurred. Well, goodness me. If we accept that this was what happened, it means that the victim, Mr. Asman, was never present on the public experimentation stage to begin with. Nah. But if, to, to be fair, right, if this was set up by hairbrain, he would have been the one to put him in there, right? In short, he couldn't have been killed by the defendant who was on stage in full view the entire time. Ah! That's true. Then I guess he would have shot the arrow, right? This will be the very, very hard for the prosecution to counter. Lord Vanseese can't credibly maintain their professor hairbrain as a suspect now. Oh God, hairbrain's gonna come out here and fuck this up now, right? Hold it! Yup, he's gonna do it. There he is. Mr. Arahono, I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. But, professor? But you can stop now. Just keep your mouth shut, please. Sorry? What's all this about, Mr. Hairbane? Uh, Albert Hairbane, here I confess that it, that it was. That it was me who stabbed Mr. Oni Asman. Yes, it was me with my faithful friend and partner, Andrew the Screwdriver. What? What are you doing? Order, order, order. Defendant, explain this sudden confession. He's trying to hide what he did? Set up here? Professor Harebrain, what are you talking about? It's, it's what I said all along. I must protect my hypothesis in my precious machine. Your precious lie? You stand there and claim it was all a trick. You're all an elaborate prince rank. Where's your proof? No, you, you'd have to examine the machine if you wanted to prove it. But then it would all be over. 
A beautiful hypothesis will be laid bare. I mean, the dignity of it. It's clear that you drew the plans for the experiment, but you didn't actually build it. It's quite conceivable that you were duped, Professor. If you just let me, I can prove... Barak! Yes. I'll cooperate. I'll do whatever you say. I swear it. So, so please. Ensure the special dispensation for scientific equipment actors is here to and protect my creation. Hold on a second. I just feel like having a little sippy do. Hmm. Pray, forgive the discourtesy of filling my hallowed chalice at this critical juncture. Here's to my learned Nipponese friend. What? And his upcoming attempt to clarify the defense's position in the light of the accused's confession. Do you intend to formally assert that the experiment was nothing more than a conjur conjuring trick? Because the moment you do, the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act that protects the professor's invention will cease to apply. The prosecution will then demand a rigorous examination of the machinery involved in order to establish the truth. Hmm. However, if you acknowledge that the machine is genuine and instrumental in the victim's murder, <laughs> any chance of investigating will be crushed, and the confidentiality of the professor's hypothesis is preserved. Well, counsel, what's the defense's official position on this matter? Well, Professor Harebrain, my client, actually asked him me was to prove that the explosion on the stage was an accident and protect the secrecy of his hypothesis. But there's no way to do that without implying the professor's guilt. Do I protect my client's life by asserting his innocence? Or do I uphold my client's request by see him condemned? Either way, I can't avoid betraying his trust. Wow. Wow. Super cool. Oh my God, man. Wow. So cool. You've been silent long enough. Is it talking or trade, my learned friend? Or has all knowledge of English escaped your confused Nipponese mind? Ah, oh God, I'm freaking out, bro. Mr. Narahodo, there's no escape here. I have to make a choice. But it's an impossible one. I have to give up on something. But what? The defense asserts that the defendant's instantaneous getting this machine was, in fact, a proper scientific invention. A conjury trick. Fuck you. Ah! No. I can't say it. My client pl places faith in me. I can't just let him down. What must I give up on? It's not, it's not the question you have to ask yourself here. It's what can I protect? <gasps> oh my god! Motherfucking Susan Ozak from the Demon Dead! Hello! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! I fucking knew it. Hey, wait, it didn't even happen in the middle of like a uh another investigation scene. No, she's fucking back. I knew that's what Iris was going to do. Hello again, Mr. Arahoto. It's been far too long. <laughs> Susan Osan! I knew she'd come in to save the day. I did oh, no! oh, why? The first sister to take down six months. Oh, it hurts so good. Oh. There'll be time to talk later, Mr. Arahoto. For now, we must concentrate on the task at hand. Oh, just working out not what I have to give up on, but what I can protect. Hmm. Professor Hairbrain. Ah, yes. Yesterday, you told me that science is the pursuit of truth. Well, my job is to pursue the truth, too. Yes, of course. And personally, I believe that you didn't stab Mr. Asman. I think you've come to realize something yourself, too, haven't you? That your experiment and the machine you built with the victim are questionable. The truth behind that is what we must both pursue now. So, you finally opened your eyes. What? And as for you, Albert, you can't ignore this any longer. Nah. Having heard my learned friend's assertion, don't you have something to say? 
Mm. But Barak. Lord Van Zeeks. Gosh, I've never heard him speak that way before. In truth, there's one thing. Something I've remembered that's of relevance. What? On the day it happened, just before I began the experiment, I saw a man near the stage. A man holding the crossbow. I beg your pardon. Professor, did the man have any distinguishing features? What do you look like? Uh, tall, taller than me, and thin, thinner than me. Well, straight hair, straighter, and whiter than mine. Uh, let me see. One less lens than me, too. A monocle. A stylish black monocle. But one thing in particular will help to positively identify the man. You see, I know him very well. After all, he's the engineer who built my invention. I fucking knew it. What? He built the machine? That's right. Mr. Asman introduced him to me a year ago. He's... He's a man by the name of... Enoch Dreber. Enoch Dreber. Enoch Dreber. I'm trying to hear what the pun is here. It's definitely a pun, but I'm not getting it. Enoch Dreber. This name means something. Something. Members of the jury seem flustered. Not a name any scientist wishes to hear. That man's an abomination. Not any name any conjurer wishes to hear either. Who on earth is he? Afraid this is the first tale of this nature that I've heard in scientific circles connects with that name. There's talk of other flamboyant experiments that turn out to be nothing but stage trickery in the end. Obviously, the rascal is after the government's research grant money. When magicians are in need of money, I have heard of them resorting to these underhanded tactics. Some acquaintances of mine with experience of such things have mentioned Enoch Dreber's name before. The man is both an engineer and a magician. Yes, we're dealing with an unparalleled co confidence trickster here. That's Enoch Dreber for you. Hmm. Was the professor just not, like, aware that the engineer had duped him, basically? Potentially. So it's true, then. My invention. My great machine. It was just a grand illusion. Considering what we've just heard about Mr. Drebber's character, I'm sorry to say that sounds increasingly likely. Even though no one else believed it, I wanted to. I wanted to believe that machine would could function exactly as my hypothesis predicted. Which is why you were so opposed to it being investigated, I presume. I knew that if the machine was examined in detail, its construction would give away my hypothesis. Obviously, I didn't want that to happen. But at the same time, I knew that if it was found to be nothing more than a trick, than a work of deception, then everything I'd worked and work, I, then everything I'd worked towards, all my research, all my dreams, my whole life would be over. I was terrified of the prospect. So you really had no idea then, did you? About the true nature of the machine that was built and the true nature of Mr. Drebber. I never questioned anything. I, I didn't want to question it. It's entirely possible that Mr. Asma and Mr. Drebber were working together to use you as a means of fraudulently acquiring the research grant money. When I lost my invention on the crowds that day, it was the finest moment of my career. I pulled all the levers and turned all the dials in exactly the way Mr. Drebber had described. When the smoke suddenly started billowing out, I panicked. I didn't know what was happening. But I really don't know how the whole illusion was made to work. I, I don't know anything anymore. Let me confirm one final point with you, Professor. Do you now consent to the prosecution of submitting the necessary paperwork to release your invention from the protection afforded by the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act? Yes, please go ahead. I'm very sorry. Hmm. 
What a twist. It would appear that we shall have to suspend proceedings for the remainder of the day now. Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. The court has newly been made aware of another party whose involvement in this matter is critical. Yes, Mr. Drebber. Gather information with the man, if possible. I should like him serve with a subpoena. With pleasure, my lord. Now, counsel for the defense. Yes, my lord. When we reconvene, I should be looking for one thing and one thing alone from you. Evidence that the defendant is innocent of the crime for which he pres presently stands accused. I understand. Good. In that case, this court is adjourned till tomorrow morning. But wait, we gotta re uh, meet with uh, Susto here, right? October 23rd, 1.36 p.m., the Old Bailey Defendants Change Chamber. Mr. Arahono! Ah, yes? I... 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 I'm so sorry! I was wrong. You were right. I tricked you. You trusted me. I dragged you into my ass! Oh, how did I ever, ever come to this? I'm so, so, so sorry! Do you really have no idea, Professor? About what Mr. Drebber was really up to, I mean? About what he was really constructing? Naturally. That machine was the embodiment of my hypothesis. Of all my hopes and dreams. I had complete faith in it. All right. In that case, I won't say any more. Now, sadly, the murder accusation against you still stands. So we must do as much investigation as we can before the trial resumes tomorrow. Well, thank you for doing so much for me. Hi, Suzuto. I'm so sorry for arriving late this morning, Mr. Arahoto. <laughs> arriving late? Didn't you receive my postcard? I won't tell you know when I'd arrive. Postcard? What postcard? I heard it from you, Bruto. So it would be a surprise. Well, did it work? If it didn't, I'm going to blast you. I was surprised, all right. As soon as she threw me to the ground. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I, I was just so happy to see you again that uh, <laughs> it sort of slipped out. I was so happy to see you, I just wanted to chuck your stupid ass to the ground. Maybe we can stick to more traditional displays of emotion in, in future. Susie's train was late to London and Victoria this morning, you see. But maybe the coachman really whipped the horse's hard so she did miss the whole trial. I was watching in the gallery for a while, but in the end, I'm afraid I couldn't contain myself. You saved me in the end, Susto. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Oh? Having you at my side in court gives me the strength I need to win. Because I love you so demon much. So, I'm uh, delighted to see you back in London. Oh, you're too kind, Mr. Arahoto. I'm delighted to be here. I hope I can continue to be of service to you. Of course. So, what's brought you back? Did Professor Mikotoba not protest? for when we're back at home, shall we? You know, I've been one of my most special blends ever for this special occasion. Oh, Iris, how wonderful. I can't wait. Since no song was back in London, it's hard to describe how happy that made me feel at the time. But despite my elation, our tale was about to take yet another extraordinary turn. It's only just fucking begun. To be continued. Damn, that was awesome. What a cool fucking uh, turn of events that was. I, lo I loved that moment of like, like I can't, both choices are, are gonna fuck me, right? That was so good. I loved that. Uh, and then Susan comes in to fucking save the day. I knew, I knew that she was gonna have it. Ah, oh, oh, I love it. I love it. But now, now we can actually go and examine the scene in full detail. Uh, it's kind of a clever way of going about it too, to, to set this up. And the moment that the professor realizes that everything he's been working on is a complete sham, you know, a farce, uh, now that's when we're allowed to actually, uh, to look in the machine fully and see what really happened. Very cool, very, very cool. So, I mean, it seems like right off the bat that this Drebber guy would be the, be the baddie, right? But I don't know. 
I don't know. He said, even our host, there's, there's more twisted churns. So might be even more to it than just simply that. We do say the return of the great departed soul. Like, like I said, I, I, it makes me feel like, well, then is he just not dead? That seems like it makes it sound like somebody's coming back to life. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe for our red gum picky penguin. A boy, this LP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.